The epistle reading is Romans, chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. I'll, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I bid every one among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith which God has assigned him. For as in one body we have many members, and all the members do not have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, he who teaches in his teaching, he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who contributes in liberality, he who gives aid with zeal, he who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you for that reading, uh, Chris. And um, uh, I know Chris's uh, mom, I know she is uh, watching, beaming with pride. She can turn the service off now. Chris is done <laughs> reading. On Thursday this week, I had uh, I tidied my sermon up and I was done. It was ready to go until I went out on my bike ride. This happened the week before, if you recall. This, uh, I guess I have a biker ministry is what I have here, a biker. Uh, the sermon that I had, it, it kind of went like this, this Bible passage. I don't know whether it uh, gives me a happy memory or a little bit of PTSD. Uh, when I moved in my uh, freshman dormitory, uh, I got there, I had my stuff, uh, but most important to me was uh, I was ready to decorate. And I had a Led Zeppelin poster, I had a Rolling Stones poster, I had a couple black light posters, but my roommate had preceded me there. And he had already decorated the room. And I looked around and the featured piece was a Bible verse. I mean, come on. <laughs> We're like college freshmen. And his girlfriend had cross-stitched this and it was from this passage. She used the J.B. Phillips version, which said, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold but let God remold your minds from within. I was like, oh. I think she was saying, like, you boys better behave. You boys better behave. It's a great Bible verse. The Revised Standard Version says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. We're, we're such conformists, aren't we? I mean, I talk to parents, they hope their kids will fit in. You know, the world's such a mess, you should hope your children do not fit in, please. Uh, we're such conformists. We conform to something or another. I'm starting a series this week. Um, I hope uh, you'll sign up and subscribe. There'll be emails and videos and such. And it's called How to Become Spiritual. And let me say, being spiritual isn't like, you know, you're, 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 you're on, the, on the track of life, and if you're spiritual, that helps you do even better. It helps you be even happier as you're doing it, it. It's about being strange. It's about being odd. Flannery O'Connor said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you odd. Like following Christ, it makes you a little bit of a misfit in the world. We're not conformed to this world. I've been autographing, by the way, third grade Bibles. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to give Bibles to our third graders. I used to have to autograph those, and it used to seem like a drudgery to me until I, I finally came upon this idea that as I signed each Bible, uh, I would pray for that child. And I email all the third grade parents, and I say, how can I pray for your child when I autograph their Bible? And people say all kinds of things. But quite a few have said, I hope that my, I would want you to pray that my third grader 
not uh, some form of this, right? Not be defined by what other people think, but, but have something inside, something from God. Like, that's what defines them. I, like, I love that. I can pray that all day long. Um, passage talk, it's not about behave. I mean, what, what does it mean to behave anyway? I think I grew up thinking God has a bunch of rules and you better follow the rules. Uh, that's not the God of Romans. I, I did some... Um, I tip you off, by the way, I, what I'm about to say. I, I said at 8.30, and I thought it was really funny, and no one laughed, <laughs> and it hurt my feelings. So when I finish this, you're like, you'll know. <laughs> so I did very extensive research on Romans chapter 12 this week. I studied the original Greek. I mean, I put a lot of work in on this thing, and I discovered this amazing thing, is that Romans chapter 12 comes right after Romans chapters 1 through 11. I'm being silly, but it's important. Sometimes we take something to the Bible, we kind of lop it off, and then we misunderstand it. Romans 1 through 11 is a long dissertation from Paul on one thing, and that is the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. My kids sometimes ask me, Dad, are you ever going to get a tattoo? I might get a tattoo. I'm a sissy about pain, but I might get a tattoo. And if I get a tattoo, I'm going to put it on my wrist or my hand, and it's just going to be the word mercy. I'm somebody who forgets. I need to remember that like God has mercy on me. I can treat, I can, all other people with mercy. I can even show mercy to myself. Mercy. God is a God of mercy. It's not, you better behave, but, but instead it's because, because God is so merciful, then what kind of life Makes sense. Paul says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. I mean, if God is merciful, what, what do we do with our bodies? Paul says, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I can't think of anything more merciful than to be able to look in the mirror and, and not, oh, it's getting old, it's getting flabby, it's too tall, it's too short, it's whatever. But instead of saying, God, that's a temple of God's, that body? It's, a, it's a, so much mercy, so much mercy in that. Uh, anyway, I had some other good stuff in that sermon, and then I went on my bike ride Thursday, and I don't know why, I was paying attention to these uh, yard signs. You know how people put out yard signs, and they're, they're not political yard signs, they're kind of school spirit yard signs, you know, like, yeah, we love the Vikings, or uh, an honor student from Shamrock lives here, or whatever, the various school things. And I was taking note of these, oh, that's really cool that people do this, yeah, that's where they go to school, it's neat. <laughs> And then I saw a sign that just, I, I stopped my bike, and I looked at it. This sign said, Home of a Saint. <laughs> Home of a Saint. Turns out this was from St. Anne's Catholic School, but I didn't know that at the time, so I just saw, Home of a Saint. I wanted to go up and knock on the door. <laughs> Could the saint come out? I would... <laughs> like to meet the saint. I told this to a friend of mine who's a pastor, and he said, that is some pressure on that family. <laughs> Reminding me of the old Quaker thing. If you ask a Quaker, are you a Christian? The answer is, oh, you'll have to ask my neighbor. Not, yeah, I'm a Christian, but you'll need to ask my neighbor. Home of a saint. So I was thinking about this conformity thing. We shouldn't be conformists. It's hard not to be a conformist because we, we kind of by nature are conformists. <laughs> and then here's the idea that hit me on my bike is, uh, could we put a sign outside this church that would say, home of a saint? Or better, home of saints. It didn't take me long to think about it. And I said, absolutely. We got saints here. And if we conform to the saints, that will be our transformation, shall I say. The thing about saints uh, in the sermon, I've done it twice already. When I name anybody, they look shocked. I was in church in the round, uh, and the singers were behind me, and I said, now, Lou Ann Vaughn, and Lou Ann went, <gasps> she looked like, what? <laughs> That's always the way, right? If you say that somebody's a saint, if they say, yes, I'm glad you finally recognize this, about me that would disqualify that person from being a saint, right? It's always kind of the surprise, like, I'm a saint. I named Lou Ann. She's been singing in the church on the ground since its inception. We have people here who've been singing in this choir dating back to Walter Ball. 
Like, it's amazing. I mean, those are saints who do that. Uh, John Booth is in this service. John uh, approached him recently, and we elected him as our new lay leader. This is no small thing, because he's filling some gigantic shoes that were worn for many years by Dick Carter, who was a holy, wonderful, faithful, diligent, wise servant of the church. We talked to John because I've always found John to be a thoughtful, biblically interested reader, thinker, prayers, been out in mission, did a great job serving us in another capacity. This is saying, Linda Hawfield, uh, I approached Linda and asked her if she would be the co-chair of our capital campaign. And Linda said, I've never raised 25 cents. And I said, you'll be perfect. You'll be perfect. And she joined Ransom Foos, who's sitting in the back. Ransom, he bragged. He said, I raised $100 once. <laughs> I said, you'll be almost as good as Linda. They were great. They just went after this thing and it gave their lives for because they, they care about the church. They love God. I mean, those are saints. Uh, Jerry Brady is, has been our head usher forever. And Jerry does it always so humbly, so faithfully. He needs no attention. He needs no thanks. He does service after service. On Christmas Eve, he comes here and does all the <laughs> services. That's a saint. That's a saint. We have people who, uh, they just show up for everything and do so many things. Uh, one sitting on the front row, Liza up. There are a bunch of you who just show up and you serve it. See, she's doing the who me. It's perfect. <laughs> they just show up and serve meals at Trinity's table. Do you know this? We serve a meal to 160 people every Thursday over in the Brook Hill community. Like, people got other stuff to do, but they go do that. We have people that, instead of going on vacation to Jackson Hole in Paris, they take a week and they go with Nathan Arley somewhere to some dirty, desolate place, and they work in the dirt and work hard. Like, I'm, those are saints. We have, we have people, that, they're in Bible study groups like forever. There's one group. I love them. I met with them a few years back, and when I sat down, I said, how long have you guys been together? And they said, we've been together for 14 years. And then one of them said, we know less now than when we started. And I said, perfect. That's the goal. There are so many saints. Uh, Rick McGee, speaking of the building, I went to Rick and asked if he would chair our building committee, and Rick said, I don't think we should have a building. I said, you'll be perfect. <laughs> and he has been. It's not a title that he has. He's put hours and hours and hours in, week after week after week, and it's hard work, and we're not paying him to do this. He does it just because he loves God. He loves the church. He believes in the potential of teenagers. We have I tell you this, this summer, some of you know this, in June, I took high school seniors to the Holy Land. Ignorant people hear that and they go, oh my God, you took seniors, oh. It was one of the great gifts of my life to be able to do this. And I thought about these seniors who were just remarkable, and I started to say they're on their way to sainthood. I think that's false. I think they are already saints. In the last week and a half, we sent them off to various college campuses, and all I can say to those campuses is like, you guys better watch out. The hands and feet of Christ have shown up, and nothing's ever going to be the same where you are. We have a young adult that Taylor was telling me about the other day who suffered way more than anybody should have to suffer and be called a young adult who's so eloquent in being able to talk about how the resurrection of Jesus uh, for them brings them great um, hope and joy. I was talking the other day to a mom who uh, tirelessly cares for a couple of challenging children and for her aging. She's probably not tirelessly, right? She's probably exhausted. She told me she does this not just because she loves them, but she thinks it's a way to honor God. That's a saint. That's a saint. We have people who write big checks to our church. I don't mean what you would think of as a big check. I mean just people I know that for them, the check they write to this church is a big check. Like they got to hold their breath. Like, I'm doing this for God. 
Those are saints. We have people who work all the time for the vulnerable. All those politicized issues out there, instead of politicizing it, they just work for those who are vulnerable and stand with those who are vulnerable. I saw some little children the other day helping to serve a meal over at McCreesh Place. Those are little saints in the making, these Bibles that I signed. These are little saints in the making. What I love is that all those people would say, who, who, me, not one of them would hang a sign around their neck saying, oh, you know, I'm a saint, but that sign on my house is the home of a saint. But I can tell you they're saints because I'm their neighbor. I think they would, what they would say if I could talk with them is, uh, it's in what we talked about earlier, it's in that tattoo that I might get one day, it's in the mercy of God. All these people, all these saints that we have the joy to be around, and there are many that you could name that I've forgotten about, Stephen ministers, all kinds of people. It's amazing. What that's about is really the mercy of God, and thinking about this passage reminded me of one of my very uh, favorite hymns and a word in there that kind of sneaks up on you. Um, I'd like to sing this. Evan Curry, would you, uh, it'll go better if Evan sings with me. So great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Here it comes. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. It was morning by morning new mercies, plural. It's in Romans chapter 12, by the mercies... It's as if God's mercy isn't just one thing. It's, it's so complex. It's so manifest. It's so wonderful. It's so all-encompassing that it's mercies. <laughs> it's plural. And, and those mercies, I mean, every morning we look for them. You woke up this morning. I don't know what you thought about that. That's the mercy of God. You just drew a breath just, just then. It's the mercy of God. You enjoyed thinking about an old hymn. It's the mercy of God. The sun came up this morning. Some people say that's science, and it is science, but it's also the mercy of God. Sometimes we miss this, don't we? I preached a sermon when I was up in Davidson on mercy, and a woman, she didn't like it. She came out of the back of the church. She put her finger in my face, and she said, you were wrong. She said, everything I've got, I have worked for and earned. And I thought, what a sad, sad way to live. Whatever's good in my life has been a gift from God, from somebody. Somebody was good to me. Somebody was kind to me. Somebody was patient with me. Somebody gave me a chance. Somebody overlooked the stupid thing that I did this morning, yesterday, whenever. Somebody was kind. Somebody stuck with me. Think about those images from that Webb Space Telescope. We see so far off in space, you know, the God who, who not just made all of that, but envelops all of that. That God is so merciful that that, that God looks inside your soul and, and loves you. you know, and and you, you can't get away from it. You, you can't stop that. You can't be dumb enough that, you know, God's I'm done with him. It's just, it doesn't happen. It's all mercy. God heals broken hearts. I see people who lose something so terrible and they think, I'm not going to be able to get out of bed the next day, but they get out of bed. It's God's mercy. You think about this church. We leave this church, we go, it's a beautiful building, whatever, great institution. 
I want to look at this church and think, this is the mercy of God. How merciful of God to give us a church. How merciful of God to give us a church with saints. How merciful of God that we, too, can be saints. It's not some weird gene you don't have. It's just doing something for God, saying, present your body as a living sacrifice to God. Don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Offer yourself to God. It's all mercy. Mercies. So lovely, such a beautiful hope. Thanks be to God.